Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me. This is Elizabeth with Wondering Soul Enterprises here today to bring you a pick a card reading. And I've shuffled out three cards from my handwritten Oracle deck, my channeled message deck. So um, I just shuffled these out and thought, we'll just go wherever it leads us. So um, I want you to meditate on the cards and choose the one that you feel most drawn to. Um, one thing I did want to say when I started recording or when I turned on the camera, it was 555. So um, if that's significant to you, it means big changes, but you can also Google it and see what other meanings it has. And then I just noticed on the card, think it over. We have number 12 and on practice compassion. It's also card number 12. So, and then embrace your passion is number one. So 12, one, 12. I don't know. I, I thought the number 12 or the number five might be significant for someone out there. So just thought I would throw that out there. So anyway, so pile number one, you have the think it over Oracle card with the blue kyanite crystals. And then pile number two or group number two, you have embrace your passion and the tiger's eye. And group number three, you have practice compassion and the amazonite. Okay. So take a moment, choose your pile, and I'll have the timestamps in the description box below, and we'll meet there. Hi, group number one. Thanks again for joining me. Welcome to your reading. So you chose the blue kyanite crystal, which is for communication associated with the throat chakra. And you also have the card that says, think it over. So I shuffled these out. I'm going to incorporate this into the reading, but um, Actually, I'm probably going to start the reading based on this message, to be honest with you, but we'll see what other messages come through. Because um, I'm just sort of leaving this general and letting it flow naturally. So we're going to start with this Think It Over card, and I'm going to try to figure out what it is that you are thinking over. So... I'm feeling drawn to using the green oracle, so I'm going to try that, and then we'll probably get some tarot in just a second. Blew the candle out. Oh my goodness, I keep doing that. Let me go relight the candle real quick. Okay, so Mother Earth just fell right out. So, hmm, what are you thinking over? So this is card number 21, which is interesting too, because it's like the inverse of card number 12. And we've got a little girl sleeping under a tree on top of the planet Earth. Lots of pink and purple. So, Mother Earth. So one of the meanings of this card can be, we all have a place where we belong. And um, I'm wondering if that's kind of what you're thinking over, like where's the place that you belong? 
Let's see if we can get some additional messages. Can we use the Wildwood Tarot? To shuffle these up really well because I just recently shot some of my um, archetypes and elements videos and when I do those videos I sort everything out by suit so gotta really shuffle these up good So, thinking it over, <clears throat> can we get some more messages for group number one? So we have the Woodward, which is like the strength card. We have the Knight of Vessels, the Eel. Queen of Arrows, the Swan. The Queen of Stones flew out, but it, it kind of landed on the ground. I'm going to put that back in, but um, it did come out. So we have the Six of Stones, Exploitation, the Three of Stones, Creativity, the Three of Vessels, Joy, the Five of Vessels, Ecstasy, and the Nine of Bows, Respect. Hmm, interesting. So I think for some of you, you may be just you may be wondering about whether or not to stay in like a romantic relationship and if that's the case i think it may be sort of a new relationship and i'm getting that from this knight of vessels here and the woodward card the woodward is about that inner strength it can also be about like overcoming lust and so i and with the queen of arrows here i feel like some of you are like swimming away from someone who is like a, a silver tongue devil basically and um you're, you're just kind of thinking about whether they're authentic or not trying to decide whether or not they're authentic for others i feel like it's almost like this is one story and then this is another story um and maybe for some of you both of these things apply maybe you're thinking about love and career at the same time so I'm, I'm getting more of like a career vibe from this row here um so 
maybe you're you're um, concerned about the give and take situation. The like maybe there's an imbalance in the workplace, and perhaps your creativity. You're feeling like your creativity is being exploited, um, and you're seeking a life path that's going to bring you joy and ecstasy, something you're really passionate about. And also um, wanting to establish healthy boundaries and respect. So I think that this might kind of explain what it is that you're thinking over. And, and all of this relates to the Mother Earth card in that you're, um, you're trying to figure out where you belong. Right, so do I belong in this relationship or not? Do I belong at this job or is there another opportunity out there that's gonna bring me joy and ec ecstasy and respect and be something that I can really feel good about and passionate about? All right, so. What kind of advice do we have? for our group one people who are thinking the situation over. Let's see, I'm gonna look at the antique anatomy tarot to get a little bit of advice. Okay, well, I was gonna ask the question, what advice do we have about the potential love situation? Um, and we have the tower, oh my gosh, that just flew out. And this doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic relationship. It could be any other type of relationship. It could be related to the work relationship. Maybe there's someone at work who you feel like is maybe blowing smoke and, and you're, trying to see through that and figure out what your next move is. So this is the tower card. It's That's to me a strong indication that it's time to move on. Uh, but you know, you take, you take it how it resonates for you and listen to your own intuition. This could also be talking about something in the past that has already fallen apart and now you're moving on from that and um, seeking new things. So like what's, what happens after the tower? What's the next thing that needs to happen? Okay, five of blades. So that could be a difficult conversation. And then we have the lovers. Wow, oh my goodness. Okay, so yeah, I feel like maybe some of you are concerned about moving on, like you're feeling like maybe staying comfortable where you are and what, with what you're used to is the best, you know, is a safer choice. But this is telling me like to, to not be afraid of rocking the boat and confronting the situation, if there's been any sort of disrespect or exploitation or deception or something like that. And then this is telling me the outcome is that you're gonna find someone or something that you really love and feel passionate about to give your energy to after you settle things with this situation that you're in right now. You're gonna find the place where you belong, right? Okay, anything else on this? Um, any other guidance? We've got the sun card that wants to come out, but I'm gonna put him back in there for now. 
Okay, we have the Eight of Blades. So that's about releasing yourself from the prison of your own thoughts, releasing yourself from limiting beliefs. What are these limiting beliefs? I'm kind of thinking it over. So we have the two of rods, crossroads, making a decision and coming to a crossroads, the page of elixirs, which also says eternal youth on the bottle, and then the eight of rods. So for some of you, you might be kind of going through like a sort of growing pains type of energy where you feel like you've reached a certain level of maturity and it's time to move on. Like you're at this crossroads. Like for some of you, you might be young and ready to leave your parents' home or something like that, trying to figure out if it's time to leave home. Um, or for others, it might be um, that you're in a certain place in your career where you're, you've been out of college for a while now, working in this entry level position and now you're feeling like it's time to move up or move, get, get a promotion or move on, maybe move on to another company and, and uh, take on more responsibility for some of you. Um, and for others, it could be about just like changing careers completely or a relationship again. But yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that you're kind of stuck thinking about, well, this crossroads, should I stay and, um, you know, in my comfort zone, like I'm getting the comfort zone vibe from here, like you're just used to doing this, or move on and seek uh, new things, travel, move towards something else. So far the cards seem, to me are, are seeming to say, if, you're, if your instincts are telling you that there's something else better out there for you, to go for it. Now, when I said if you're young and thinking about leaving home, I'm not talking about like running away from your parents. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get myself in trouble. Okay. Um, Okay, so let's let's look at this crossroads a little in a little more depth. So on one side, let me try to clear this up a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. On one side of the crossroads, we have staying, right? And the other side of the crossroads, we have going towards something else. Should I stay or should I go? I feel like I just did a love reading, or I just did a reading the other day that wasn't supposed to be a love reading, but it kind of ended up that way. And then all the piles were like, should I stay or should I go? And I'm getting that energy again here. Okay, so on the side of staying, what happens if group number one stays? The eight of coins, okay, hard work. Um, that's not a bad card. It's just saying like, you'll have a lot of work to do. Um, maybe it, it also means like, if it's a relationship, it means there's gonna be a lot of work to do on the relationship. What if they go? They take the eight of wands and, and move towards something else. Hmm. 
So we have four of coins. So to me, it's kind of saying like maybe some of the fear here is that you think that by staying, you're going to be comfortable. You're going to have a lot of work to do. There's going to be more money coming in. If you go, you might have to hold on to things and just keep your energy to yourself and try to save up. It's going to be a little harder. Like the money is going to be a little tighter, perhaps. Okay, what about staying? What else about staying? moon card and then if we go towards something new five of pentacles so it's like you're afraid of being left alone I think if you leave this situation but you're also afraid of staying or like you're just not sure what's gonna happen if you stay what's the moon card here for Ten of Cups and Judgment. So some of you are afraid that if you leave, you're going to want to come back later. That's what I'm getting here. And what about leaving, moving towards something new? Empress. <sighs> wow. It's, it's like a tough decision here. Like, there's a lot of fear about going, about leaving and moving towards something else. But there's also a lot of potential. It's like a gamble. Like, you could, you could lose some of your stability and comfort. You could lose friends, you know, but it's there's also this opportunity for wealth and abundance and self-fulfillment. If you stay, there's the eight of coins, which means working on it, working things out, um, continuing to put your nose to the grindstone, and then the fear It could be a fear that you're gonna to wanna to come back if you leave, or it could be a fear. Another thing is that if you stay, you'll always be wondering. That's what that's what I'm getting now. Like if you stay, you're always gonna be wondering what might have been, and if you would have been happier pursuing this other option, maybe. That that could take it however it resonates for you. Um guidance are we going to get from the quotes? Let's see. Can we get some quotes to provide guidance for group one, please? What are they thinking over? So we have the minute you start keeping score, you start destroying the relationship. Yeah, so that that's interesting with the Woodward being there. Like it's the Woodward's talking about a backstop, like the point beyond which you won't compromise. Uh yeah, I think. And then we also have that six of stones, which is about things being out of balance. So someone feeling like they're not getting what they're worth, like they're being exploited. We had that energy as well. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind. Like 
is this about keeping score or is there something deeper going on here? Never lose hope, and if you can, find the courage to love again. Danielle Steele. Yeah, so hold on to hope, hold on to your dreams, and know that whatever, whichever way you go, you're, you're still on the path of your life's journey, right? And um, you're gonna find new things around every bend. So this one came out too. We have so far to go to realize our human potential for compassion, altruism, and love. I'm wondering too, if some of you are wanting to get into like a career field that's more altruistic and more compassionate. Again, with the exploitation card coming out, like, like feeling like your creativity is being exploited and wanting to move towards something that brings joy and ecstasy and is more respectful. I was getting that feeling earlier too. And, and now that the Jane Goodall quote came out, I'm wondering too, if some of you are evaluating whether the type of work you're doing is in line with your spiritual purpose. So that could be at play for some of you too. Too. You have to keep breaking your heart until it opens. Rumi. A lot of relationship quotes, but a lot of my quotes are relationship quotes. So you can apply it to any type of a relationship. It doesn't have to be love. It could be career or family. Okay. Faith is willing to put its foot out when there is no guarantee that there will be a step to support it. Judith Lassiter. I love that, love that quote. Okay. Because sometimes in life, you just have to take a leap of faith. This one is, I have like quotes flying around. Like I keep finding quotes on the floor and stuff. I'm, I'm assuming they're meant for you, group one. What drains your spirit drains your body. What fuels your spirit fuels your body. Oh, that's probably the best advice for, for group one so far. Like it seems like some of you are having a really hard time figuring out which option of, of the the two or however many options you're considering is the best one. Like you're kind of torn, you're really on the fence here. And, and I think that's great advice. Like, well, which one fuels your spirit? What, which one makes you, your body feel alive? And, and that's your answer right there. Okay. I'm going to get some, cards from the goddess inspiration oracle in gods and titans do we have for group one? Oh, we have two. We have Hera, the goddess of marriage. You can invite respectful relationships. 
Wow, okay. And we had the nine of bows respect coming up. That's been a big theme. And I feel like the strength card, I mean, the, I keep calling it the strength card, but the woodward, it's also about respect. And we also have Og Boimba, the goddess of prophecy. And it says, though it is good to desire, sometimes it is better to possess contentment. Yeah, so I think that the guides are really calling you to, to keep thinking it over, um, maybe to go into meditation and consider whether, whether is the grass really greener on the other side? Or is that just like a desire? Are, are you really content where you are now? Are you truly content where you are now? Or do you feel like um, there's not enough respect there and you need to go? It's up to you. But they're giving you some ideas on what to consider. Which, which thing really sets your spirit on fire? Okay. Let's get a message from the Gods and Titans Oracle. that are trying to flip over, but... Okay. Shiva the Destroyer. He's been showing up a lot. In my readings lately. Dance away any old beliefs that burden you. Let go of those limiting beliefs. Remember, we spoke about that. Defy and destroy what stands in your way to happiness and enlightenment. So he's sort of like the tower card in God form. So Shiva says, burn it down and uh, and go for your happiness. Ogboyimba says, well, just make sure that you're focusing on being content. Um, it's good to have desires, but don't just go make a rash decision just because the grass is greener on the over on the other side. And then we have think it over the card that you picked. So just advising you to really take it into careful consideration before making a life-changing decision. Okay, um, I think I'm gonna get a card from the Working with the Four Elements deck. And these usually have some suggestions for meditation and things like that. So that might help you to clear your head and get into a quiet place in your mind where you can um, release yourself from some of these limiting beliefs or recirculating beliefs or recirculating thoughts to help you make a more clear-headed decision.
So you got the tree elf, and this is from the element of earth, card number seven. And if you're familiar with my uh, archetypes and element series, we draw from this deck every time in, in those videos and I always read them. So I feel like I've read these cards multiple times, but there's always something new to pick up on. <clears throat> new synchronicities and new images on the cards too. There's a lot of hidden faces and things in the cards. The card of the tree elf can help you concentrate. Look into the eyes of the elf and try and absorb the green. Green is the color of harmony and growth. In your meditation, try to visualize the green leaves and there you can connect to the world of the elves. Busy working with the growth of the tree Allow the emerald green in all its shade to develop over you and feel the power of nature healing. Seek out your favorite tree and sit with your back against it and blend with the tree. Be open to receive its healing. I will become the green ray of healing. Okay, so something else I just noticed. So this says, seek out your favorite tree and sit with your back against it and blend with the tree. Be open to receive its healing. So yeah, maybe connecting with trees will help you to, um, to concentrate on this, on this decision that you need to make. I don't know if you noticed, but the creativity card has a woman who's basically becoming the tree, like like the tree elf card was saying. And then this little girl is sleeping under the tree. Yeah, so go find a nice tree to meditate under, clear your head, think about whether you're content where you are, or whether you really need to move on and, um, and move towards something that provides more respect and and really fuels your spirit and fuels your body okay thank you so much group one um if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up if it resonated for you and you want to share your comments below i'd love to hear what you have to say and um and subscribe to my channel for future pick a card readings thank you so much take care Hi, group two. Welcome to your reading. This is the tiger's eye stone that you chose. And you also chose embrace your passion, card number one. So we're going to be basing the reading on this card that you chose. That's what we did in group one. I think we'll do that here too. I'm just sort of going with a fluid approach here to figure out what's going on and just um, letting it be very intuitive. So embrace your passion. Let me tune in. Okay, we're gonna get a green oracle card again to get a little more information On your situation. Let's 
So you have card number 30, sustainability. So this is about balance and how it's difficult to find balance sometimes, but it's possible and how the solutions aren't always clear. So we'll see how that comes into play as we move along here. Um, I'm gonna get the antique anatomy tarot and draw some more cards to get more information on the situation. So what is it that group two needs to embrace? Like what is their passion that they need to embrace? And your passion could have something to do with sustainability. Maybe that's why the card popped up. Trying to make the world a better place for people, planet, and um, also have the healthy economy, triple bottom line. That's my passion. <laughs> so, let's see. start with these three. So we have the four of coins, the wheel of fortune, card number 10, and the seven of coins. Oops. So this four of coins is sort of like a I don't know if I want to say a bored energy, but I, it seems like maybe you've been kind of guarded and withdrawn. It's the word that's coming up, and then with the with the wheel of fortune, it's it's telling us that your luck's about to change. Good things are coming your way, and now you're e evaluating what you want to do next. My goodness, this seems like this could be like my reading. <laughs> but I, I'm hoping there's someone else out there who's gonna be able to resonate with this. Oh, Four of Rods, Homecoming, Finding, um, and, and it's, you know, with the Rods, that's about passion too. So I think you're trying to figure out what it is that's gonna really like um, make you feel at home and, and very passionate at the same time. And you're just trying to figure out how to do that. Deciding, weighing pros and cons of um, making maybe making a certain decision between two options. Any more information on what these options might be? What are these options that are being considered? By group one. The moon. The seven of rods and the six of rods. Let's 
so I feel like there's some sort of dream you've got that you're working towards and you're just not sure where it's going. You may be concerned about competition, perhaps like in your field and then um, and the ability to succeed. For some of you, this could be a relationship too, where you're seeking reunion with somebody, you've been held back, things are changing, you're trying to decide whether to, re to reunite with somebody, and um, now you're kind of worried that there might be uh, competition, and but you're still wanting to move forward. And the sustainability card did talk about relationships and how sometimes they can be difficult and a lot of hard work, but they can still work out if you do put the effort in. So that could be part of this too. All right, let's see, what guidance? What are we gonna use for guidance? Okay, we're gonna use Wildwood for guidance. Four of bows, again, celebration. And that can be about homecoming and reunion. 13, the journey, that's the death card. And card number eight, the stag, which is like the justice card. So the guidance I'm getting here is to stay in a high vibration to go through the process of transformation that needs to happen, which means letting go of old beliefs, things that don't serve you, relationships that don't serve you, um, basically clearing out the old to make room for whatever it is that you're trying to call into your life. And then the stag is about karma and justice basically about um, making things right. So there may be a need to make something right and bring something into balance. Can we get more information on that? Um, we have the Ace of Bows, the Spark of Life. So like bringing your energy into balance, I guess, is what they're trying to say. With Ace of Bows and getting energy. Okay, so maybe that's, maybe that means to meditate and clear your chakras. You can watch my chakra videos on my yoga series if you wanna check that out. Um, that's a good way to, to clear your energy. Um, there's also a lot of like meditations for energy clearing. You can check out YouTube. I also have an app that I use called Insight Timer and it's free, they have a lot of free guided meditations. Uh, you could try something like that. And then there's also people that do like Reiki and all kinds of stuff. So I would suggest looking into something like that to clear your energy and, re and release things that are holding you back from your passion. And that can help you to discover what it is, it's gonna make you feel at home and bring you into this higher vibration. 
makes any sense. Okay, so let me get some goddess and god cards. And then we'll close out with one of the working with the four elements cards. And I'm feeling this nudge to go out right after I'm done filming and go buy a new deck. <laughs> like my, my uh, intuition is telling me it's time to do that. So maybe I'll have a new deck for the channel next time. Next time I post the video. So we have our, excuse me, Erda, the goddess of the earth. Look to the earth for answers. Wow. Okay. Getting grounded. Maybe it's time to get grounded and ground your energy. Let me read a little bit about Erda because I think it says something in the book about Okay, so Erda is the goddess of wisdom, fate, and divination. She's in the Norse earth goddess. She lived in a cave within the earth's deepest recesses, which was set next to the roots of Yggdrasil, the vast world tree. Yggdrasil was watered by Erda's plentiful fountain of wisdom. Erda's powder powders. Uh, Erda's powers were as encompassing as Yggdrasil's leafy span. The goddess and her magical fountain were often invoked by those in need of her far-reaching wisdom. Others believed Erda could blend. I can't talk today. Others believed Erda could bend the inexorable powers of fate over which she ruled. Because of Erda's association with fate, the Norse thought there was a clear correlation between the goddess and the art of divination. They often turned to the earth itself for guidance, using many aspects of it as oracles, animals, birds, the sky, even the ocean. They believed observation of these phenomena could offer divine answers. Oh, wow, okay. So practicing um, augury or um, what's it called? Is it or ornithomancy where you watch the birds and try to figure out what the meanings of the birds mean? You might look at something into something like that. We have all these crows on the death card and again for me personally i've been seeing the i've been seeing crow cards pop up and all these i watch a lot of other um youtube tarot card readers and i keep getting crow cards in all of my pick a card readings i'm gonna have to look up and, and see what that means We also have Eros, the god of love. So definitely passion, right? What does that say? Step out of chaos and allow love to direct all. A new love liberates your mind, body, and soul. Oh, that's exciting. Cool. You know what, I just realized for group one, I picked out some quotes. So I'm going to do that too before we pick your final message. Hmm. 
You've got to learn to leave the table when love's no longer being served. Hmm. That could resonate for some of you if you're thinking about leaving a situation in search of a new situation. Love, friendship, laughter. Some of the best things in life really are free. Never bet your money on another man's game, Mara Ingalls Wilder. Or the Wheel of Fortune too. I never took Mara Ingalls Wilder for much of a gambler, but maybe she was. She was becoming herself and daily casting aside that fictitious self, which we assume like a garment with which to appear before the world. Gosh, I keep getting these messages over and over again, like someone is leaving something behind, becoming independent, doing their own thing. Yeah, just clearing your energy and just being yourself. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go ahead and get one of these working with the four elements cards. These have a lot of good advice and suggestions for meditation things like that. Just light the candle. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, no, this is a different one. That's so weird. They're very similar. This is a very similar card to the one that um, that group one got. But they're not the same. Just really similar. Let's see. Yeah, the group Group one got the tree elf, and it looks so similar to this. But you have the ivy elf, completely different elf, just also very green. Okay. The ivy elf is very powerful and secretive and should not be underestimated. Always working, covering everything in its path even beautiful sculptures of art in the garden. Our spiritual gifts are the same, hidden away deep inside us. Working with Ivy Elf can help us remove the ivy from the door to reveal our gifts and also teach us about the astral plane the, in the kingdom of the fairy world for all to enter. Knock on the door and you may enter. Listen to the voice within what gift would you like to develop? Set your mind to it and the spirit world will help you develop your gifts. My determination will open the door. That's so exciting. You guys are like on a some sort of a spiritual path. I feel, especially with this Erda card, talking about reading the signs from nature. 
we ha also had the journey, the death card. You know what? I'm going to read from the Wild Blade book about the death card to the journey. I love this. This deck has a really great guidebook. It's really interesting. They, the, the deck itself is a little bit different than the traditional tarot, but still, it still honors it. But um, I like the way they wrote about their cards and I love the artwork too. It's so cool. Okay. It is time to face the inevitable, to let the bones be laid bare and acknowledge the deepest aspects of your fears and desires. Do not fear change because this is also a time of purification and realignment. This change may seem extreme and destructive, but old crops must be cleared for new growth to thrive and static or sterile modes and concepts must perish. A celebration of the past or an acknowledgement of the passing of one part of life may be required. Let the threads of the old slip from your fingers with joyful remembrance and enter this time of withdrawal and renewal with patience and calm. All right, well, group two, I, um, I wish you lots of luck on your journey. I think that what we explored here today are some ideas to help you really go within and figure out what gift it is that you want to develop so you can figure out what to do next and to just approach it with love, peace, calm, realizing everything's changing and just embrace that change. And uh, also a lot of messages about clearing away stuff. So the Ivy Elf is about needing to clear things away. Um, we had the quote about casting aside your fictitious self and the journey is about clearing the old things away as well. So be sure to clear out anything that's not serving you. And um, yeah, you might want to try um, clearing your energy as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. If this resonated with you, if you could give it a thumbs up, maybe comment below. Let me know your thoughts or ideas for future readings. And uh, please subscribe to my channel for future pick a card readings. I also have an archetypes and elements series that you can check out. And then um, I, I'm also doing yoga videos. I need to post one again soon. I'm really late on my Taurus season yoga video um but we have yoga i have yoga videos and sometimes guitar so yeah check it out appreciate you being here take care hi group three thank you for being here welcome to your reading you chose the amazonite crystals i guess people would call these cubes they're not exactly cubes, but they're kind of like that, polished amazonite. And also the card that says, practice compassion. So let me put that over here. And we're basing the reading today on the card that you chose. So we're gonna explore what this means for you, practice compassion, um, and where this needs to be pulled into your life. So I'm going to start with the green oracle card to get a little more information on your situation. What is group three dealing with here?
my goodness, so much is coming out. Let's just get one card, one card, please. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I guess there's a lot they want to say, but I really want to just get one card if we can. Okay. So we have card number six, health. So I'm going to look in the book because there's always like a little, the meanings aren't always exactly what you'd take at face value just from looking at the card. So it says, take care of yourself, even if it takes effort, share the happy moments, choose the motion and the energy. Okay, so yeah, self-care and also caring for others, right? Practicing compassion. So I'm going to get the Rider weight, which is in my office. I'll be right back. <laughs> Just a sec. Oh. oh my gosh. Okay, this whole time it was hiding under a box. Apologies. Maybe that's a sign. Something's hidden <laughs> that needs to be uncovered. And my candle went out. <laughs> We're looking for a little more information on your situation, group three, and then we'll get some guidance. Okay. We have three wands cards come up. Okay, um, so there's something that you're fighting and you're feeling inspired to, to make a big change, I think. And then um, King of Wands is just more inspiration. Like you, I think you're feeling inspired to improve your health because King of Wands can be, uh, he's a very healthy person and athletic and um, has a lot of energy. So I think you're like looking for ways to increase your energy. Get more information for group three. Ten of Swords, Three of Cups, and Two of Pentacles. 
Yes, I feel like you may have you may have been feeling down lately, maybe exhausted, and you're wanting to get back out there, meet new people. This could be like getting back together with friends after the pandemic type of energy. And you're also feeling kind of ambivalent about how you feel about that, like getting back out there, because this kind of came up in the reversed position. So I think you're wanting to to uh, go out there and reconnect with people, but also kind of iffy about it and not quite sure how you feel about it at the same time. And I feel like you're wanting to make changes in, in your health to help bring you more energy and, and confidence before getting back out there again. The death card, so big changes. Why is the death card here? Ten of Pentacles. Well, like there's been a lot of changes in the community in general and in life in general, I guess. Just like every, everything's kind of changed and um, there may have been some changes in your career situation, financial situation. Anything else about the death and the ten pentacles? The moon. The moon showed up in every reading today. And the death card showed up in group two as well um i think it's this what's next energy i i feel that really strongly like in myself and i i feel like everyone uh, everyone in the u.s is feeling that way right now too like we're getting to a point where most people are vaccinated like the majority of adults are vaccinated now so we're excited about that but i think everyone's kind of like okay what now what's what's next i feel like it's that way in my industry in the construction industry as well because like people are like well is it safe to build hotels now <laughs> you know stuff like that um are people actually gonna go on vacation should we hold off? I, I feel like it's that uncertainty that's coming up here in this pile and in all, all of the readings I've been doing lately. It seems like there's that underlying energy of what's next. Okay, do we have any guidance for group three? We have the tent, the wheel of fortune. That's come up. Well, that came up in group two as well. I don't remember if it came up in group one. Uh, I don't. I don't remember. But yeah. So luck is changing. So um, look for positive changes coming in your life. Be grateful for your good fortune. Your guidance. Messages coming as well. Ace of Swords and the Eight of Wands. So they're telling you, don't worry. Things are things are gonna be okay, <laughs> and you're gonna be hearing soon 
about what's coming next. You know, the, ans the answer is going to be coming soon. Okay, so why do we have practice compassion here? How does group three need to bring compassion in to their life? We have this star, so I'm feeling like compassion for yourself as you're going through all this, like um, trying to get your health in order, get your finances in order. Just be kind to yourself and focus on your dreams and self-care. Anything else? Why else is compassion coming up for group three? So we have the tower and the queen of pentacles and then the ace of pentacles that came out. So I think they're trying to tell you, you may be like a mom, possibly. The queen of pentacles is kind of the mom card. So the tower is like all the crazy stuff that's been going on. I know there's been crazy stuff going on in your life. There's There's been crazy stuff going on in everybody's life lately. So this could be just the pandemic in general, but maybe there's a specific tower moment that's happened for you. you you'll know what that is. If something in your life got rocked to its core, um, and the Queen of Pentacles, that the message I'm hearing is you're doing a great job, Mama. <laughs> so if you're a mama, that's for you, right? If not, you're doing a great job anyway, but you're you're doing a good job taking care of your responsibilities. I know there's a lot of moms who have been kind of like not able to work as they like they used to because of everything that's going on. Schools are closed and stuff. And so it's just adding more onto the uh, the mom workload, honestly, like more, more things for women to worry about. So they're just saying that you're doing a great job and that new opportunities are coming. So have faith in that and be compassionate to yourself. Like I, I really feel like this the cards are saying, when it's saying practice compassion, yes, be compassionate for other people, but also I feel like you might need to have a lot of compassion for yourself and know that you're doing a great job. Um, let's get a few quotes. Oh my gosh, they're just flying out. For beautiful eyes, look for the good in others. For beautiful lips, speak only words of kindness. And for poise, walk with the knowledge that you are never alone. Audrey Hepburn. Oh, that's so beautiful. And that goes along with this reading because I feel like some of you are kind of being hard on yourself, like physically about like beauty and, and that kind of thing. like. And this is saying, you know, your, your beauty is your spirit and, and the love that you show to other people and the, the beauty that you see in the world as well. This says, if you do not tell the truth about yourself, you cannot tell it about other people. Virginia Woolf. And that calls to mind that saying, like, if you don't love yourself, you're not going, in order to, to find love in other people, you have to love yourself first. I'm, I'm kind of taking a leap, taking the, tr she's talking about the truth, but I'm extending that to mean like love. The truth is that you're doing a great job. Like, I feel like you're very resilient and you're, you're rolling with the punches. Okay. Um, some of you have passion on the mind, so 
There's a blush for won't and a blush for shan't and a blush for having done it. There's a blush for thought and a blush for not and a blush for just begun it. John Keats. So there could be some kind of like spicy romantic interlude coming your way. That King of Wands is here too and the Ace of Wands. Those both indicate a romantic uh, rendezvous. Okay, let's see here. No matter how much you've sinned, no matter how much you've stumbled, no matter how much you fall, no matter how far you've got from God, don't give up. You can still be redeemed. As someone says, keep the faith, Johnny Cash. Yeah, don't give up, keep on going. You're doing great. Don't be so hard on yourself. So I'm going to get a Gods and Titans Oracle and then one of the Goddess Inspiration Oracle cards. And then I'll wrap it up with a card from working with the four elements. Poseidon flow, so going with the flow, go with the flow, where's the cards, cards, here we go, <clears throat> well, I'm going to go with the one that flipped out face up. Tara, goddess of intervention. Your wish can be granted if you ask for help. Go with the flow. New opportunities are coming your way. Set your intention. Okay. And uh, ask for what you want in the universe. Some guidance for group three. So 
you have Green Angel from the Element of Air, card number two. Green Angel, the angel of growth and balance. You can find the angel in God's garden, the garden within us all. When you link with the green angel, she can help you find the peace and understanding, the understanding of the positive and negative emotions that are fighting each other. She helps bring back the harmony and to understand the great power that lies deep within us all. The green angel will bring the power to germinate the seeds within our soul. As the seeds begin to grow, so the power of peace and the pathway to God starts to blend within like the flowers in God's garden. Meditate on the color green and visualize and breathe in the color. I will work in the peace of the Lord. Oh, yeah, just going within, finding growth and balance. And um, it says to focus on the color green. So Amazonite is a green stone associated with the heart chakra. So you could use something like that. It's, I feel like it's like a very calming stone too. So just some suggestions, give it up to God, go with the flow, ask for what you need and um, and yeah, and just know that things are going to be coming around um, back into your favor, okay? I know it's been a tough, tough journey, but um, things are looking up. Okay, group three, thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, if you'd give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below how it resonated for you or if you have any ideas for future things that you'd like me to read on, let me know. And um, subscribe to my channel for future pick a card readings. I also have an Archetypes and Elements series that you might want to check out and some yoga videos as well. So um, please uh, feel free to look through my playlist and uh, all the readings on there are timeless so you can check out what's already on there and um, hope to see you again sometime. Until then, take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.